the determinant of a matrix, the determinant using diagonals. Before we jump into the calculation, let's talk a little bit about what a determinant is. So it's a single numerical value calculated from a square matrix, so it must be a square matrix. For instance, if we have a system of equations, and again, if we had this, we would write this as A11, A12, A21, A22, and we're going to talk about this in a moment, but the determinant is A11, A22, which you'll find is a diagonal, minus A21, A12. So that is one of the applications that we'll talk about. This is actually Kramer's rule, which we won't get to until section 3.4, but it does give us an idea of one of the applications about how to use um, determinants of matrices, and that is to solve a system. So I could solve this system for x1 by finding the determinant, and that would be the denominator of my fraction, and then we'll talk in section 3-4 about where these guys come from. Now, again, why do we want the determinant? Well, we can solve a system of equations. We can determine if a matrix has an inverse, uh, determine how linear transformation affects area or volume, etc. So it gives us a scaling factor of a matrix. As we talked about just a moment ago, we can use the determinant of a matrix. So we can write that coefficient matrix from our system of equations, and we can find the determine it by simply finding the product of the first diagonal and subtracting the product of the second diagonal. So again, I want you to note what the notation looks like for determinants. So if you see what looks like absolute value brackets, that means find the determinant. So sometimes they will say find debt a, which means find the determinant of A, but sometimes they'll just say find this, and you'll have to know that those absolute value brackets means find the determinant of that matrix. So in this case, if I were finding the determinant of my first matrix, I would take 0 times 1, which is 0, and 2 times 1, which is 2, so 0 minus 2 is negative 2. For my second, I would take 3 times 2, which is 6, and 1 times 6 which is 6, so the determinant there is 0. We can also use matrices in a 3x3 three three matrix or 4x4 four four or 5x5, five five, but it gets um, a little bit tedious, so it's a really easy method for a 2x2. Two two. For a 3x3, three three, it is one method we could use, but I don't ever use it past 3x3. Three three. So if you're going to use this method, the first step is to take the first column and write it again, 0, 4, and then take the second column and write it again to the right of that, 2, 1, 2. And then we're going to use diagonals, um, but there's going to be more than one product. So I'm going to find all of the diagonals in this direction, 0 times 1 times negative 1, and that gives me 0. And then 2 times 2 times 5, and that's why we had to rewrite that column so that we would have the 5. So 2 times 2 is 4 times 5 is 20. And then 3 times 4 times 2 is 12 times 2, or 24. Then I'm going to do the same thing in the opposite direction. So now I'm going to take 5 times 1 times 3, which is 15 and 2 times 2 times 0, which is 0, and 2 times 4 times negative 1, which is negative 8. And just for reference, when I'm doing this, I typically use a highlighter to highlight uh, the diagonals. It kind of helps me to keep things straight because you're not always able to erase as easily as using digital ink. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to find the sum of the downward diagonals, which was 44, and I'm going to find the sum of the upward diagonals, which is 7, and then I'm going to take 44 
minus 7. And that's going to give me my determinant, and so that is 37. So 37 is my determinant. Now, typically when I'm showing work for this, I would just show the 0 plus 20 plus 24 minus 15 plus 0 plus negative 8, and then equals, and then I would go right to there. The determinant of a square matrix. Another way that we can use to find the determinant of a square matrix besides using uh, diagonals, which isn't super useful past three and really not super helpful even with a three by three matrix. Minors and cofactors work for any size matrix, particularly when you have zeros, which is super helpful. But let's talk about how to find a minor and then the cofactor. So the minor of some entry is the determinant of the matrix obtained by deleting the i-th row and j-th column. So before we talk about cofactors, let's talk about the minor. We're going to talk about minor 1-1. One, 1-1 one. One, one means row 1, column 1, which means I'm taking out row 1, I'm taking out column 1. The minor for 1-1 one, one is the determinant of the matrix left over. 1, 2, 2, negative 1. Well, we know how to do this because it's a 2 by 2, so we can use diagonals. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1, and then we subtract 2 times 2. So again, I'm just taking the diagonal and the diagonal, so I'm subtracting 4, and that gives me negative 5. Let's do the same for M12. So for M12, that's the first row but the second column. So M12 says we're going to have 4, 2, 5, negative 1. 4, 2, 5, negative 1. And now I'm going to find the determinant, again, using diagonals. So 4 times negative 1 is negative 4, minus 5 times 2, which is 10, so negative 14. Now, minors are great, but really what we want is the cofactor. And the cofactor is simply taking the minor that we've already found times negative 1 to the i plus j. So for cofactor 1, 1, I'm going to take negative 1 to the 1 plus 1, 1 plus 1, and then I'm going to multiply it by negative 5, which is the minor. Now negative 1 to the second is positive 1. So my result is negative 5. It didn't change. But for M12, I had, I'm sorry, for C12, C12 would be negative 1 to the 1 plus 2 times negative 14. And in this case, negative 1 to the third is negative 1. So really, the cofactor is just going to possibly change the sign. So obviously, only for this value, this value, this value, this value, because um, that's where the values would be an odd number. So this is going to be positive 14. The reason that we need minors and cofactors is to use cofactor expansion. And cofactor expansion can be with rows or with columns. I'm going to show you both ways. Notice it says find it in two ways. We're going to ensure that they are the same. But essentially what we're going to do is because we're smart and lazy, we want to have as many zeros as possible. So I'm going to start with a row. Looking at the rows, I have a zero here in this row, and that's good. But this row, if you'll notice, I have two zeros. And again, I'm smart and lazy, and therefore I'm going to choose this row. And what this tells me to do is to find the determinant of A, I'm going to take the entry of zero times the cofactor. Now, do I care about what the cofactor is? I really don't because it's going to be multiplied by zero. I'm going to put zero there just as a placeholder. Then I take the next entry in that row, which is also a zero, and I also don't care about the cofactor of this. Like I could write it out if I wanted to, but it really doesn't do anything for me because I'm going to multiply it by zero. So my very last entry is a two, 
And so I'm going to use two, and then I'm going to take that times the cofactor of that value. So just like we just did before, now I have negative one to the second row, third column, and the matrix that's left over is zero, two, five, two. So this tells me the determinant is zero plus zero, which is zero. And then I have two times negative one to the fifth. That makes it a negative one. So that's negative two. And then the determinant of this matrix is zero times two, which is zero minus five times two, which is 10. So that gives me negative two times negative 10 or positive 20. So that was using a row. Let's also use a column and ensure that we get the same value. Again, I'm not stupid. So I'm going to choose a column that has as many zeros as possible because that lessens the amount of work that I have to do. So the determinant of A is again going to be zero plus zero. And I know I don't have to write out the cofactors for those. And then five, so five, and then negative one to the third row plus first column. And what's left over is two, three, zero, two. So that gives me five times negative one to the fourth, which is positive five. And then two times two is four minus zero times three is zero. So five times four is 20. And notice I had 20 here and I also had 20 here. So again, we didn't have to work very hard because we were smart enough to look for as many zeros as possible. Let's take a look now at finding the cofactor expansion of a four by four matrix. Again, the first thing I would do is examine the rows and columns to determine which row or column has the most zeros. Now, it works no matter what. If I really felt like doing a lot of math, I could say, let's use this column, which has no zeros at all. But again, I'm lazy and don't want to do that much work. And anytime I do work, that's an opportunity to make an error. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose this column, which has three zeros. Now we know that using cofactor expansion, that says the determinant of A is three times the cofactor of one, three, and then zero times the cofactor of two, three, and then zero times the cofactor of three, three, and zero of four, three. So basically that means we don't care about those. It's just three times the cofactor of one, three. So the cofactor of one, three would be taking out the row in the column. And notice we have to do a little bit of extra work here because I have three and then negative one to the first row, third column, one plus three. And then I still have a three by three matrix left over. So negative one, one, two, zero, two, three, three, four, negative two. That's my three by three. From here, I'm just going to continue using cofactor expansion. I'm going to choose another row or column. I've chosen this column, but feel free to choose another one. Um, for instance, I could certainly choose this row instead, also that has a zero. So what I have is three times negative one to the fourth, which means I still have a positive three. And then I have negative one times cofactor of one, one, zero times cofactor of two, one, three times cofactor of three, one. Again, I'm not gonna worry about this one. So I have three on the outside, so everything times three. And then I have negative one to the negative one to the one plus one, because this is first row, first column. And then again, the cofactor of that two, three, four, I'm sorry, the minor of that two, three, four, negative two. And then three and negative one to the three plus one. And then again, what's left over after I take away that row and column, one, two, two, three. So now I'm finding those determinants. From here, I would take negative three, and then this is obviously a positive one, but it's times negative one, so that's where this negative one comes from. Two times negative two is negative four. Four times three is 12, so negative four minus 12. And then three, 
This obviously is also a positive because it's negative one to an even power. So it's plus three and then three minus four. And finally, I get three times 16 plus negative three or three times 13, which is 39. We just went through the cofactor expansion. Let's take a look at that same matrix A and we found by hand that it was 39. Notice I've already entered in the values into Desmos. We already know how to do that. And so I'm just going to put debt A enter and we get a value of 39. Here's a cofactor expansion question for you to try on your own. So press pause, use either row or column cofactor expansion to find the determinant. When you're ready, press play to see how you did. Now, if you're trying to minimize work, you've either chosen the third column or the third row. I have chosen the third column, so that means I have one times the cofactor of row one, column three, and then the others I don't really care about because they are zeros. Um, again, typically I would not show this step, so I would just go straight to this step, which would be one, and then negative one to the one plus three, first row, column three, which turns into one. And then everything left over, which is negative one, 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 zero, zero, three, four, negative two. Again, trying to minimize my work. It looks like I have a great row with a couple of zeros. So I'm going to take one. And then again, I wouldn't even bother writing this step because those are zero. So you might put plus zero plus zero just to show. But I have one times C21. So row two, column one. So I'm going to take out row two and column one and see what's left over, which is one, one, four, negative two. Notice this is two plus one. So this is actually going to turn into a negative one because it's negative one to an odd power. So I have negative one on the outside and then I have negative two minus four, which is negative six, and I multiply it by negative one to get positive six. One last way to find the determinant of a square matrix is to use a triangular matrix. Recall we learned about upper triangular and lower triangular matrices, which means we either have all zeros below or all zeros above the main diagonal. And if you have that, all you have to do to find the determinant is to multiply along the diagonal. So to find the determinant of A, I would take one times three times negative one. Keep in mind, this only works on a triangular matrix. So if I have a random four down here, I would have to work to get it into triangular form before I could use uh, the diagonal. Up next, determinants and elementary matrices.